Hey everyone, QB King 77 here from the AC Syndicate team here to do a review video of the official signage of Mod 9 ROM on your Sprint Galaxy Nexus. So here's a full review of it. Obviously, Signage Mod 9 is a custom ROM made to um, emulate the stock ice cream sandwich experience, but add some tweaks. Uh, overall, though, uh, speed-wise, it's definitely improved over stock. Um, definitely get a little faster experience going on with CM9. But first of all, let's go ahead and go into the settings. So let me go into my settings. So go to settings, about phone, and as you can see right there, signage mod version 9, uh, snapshot alpha 1. So this would be the initial release of the official um, build, which does not have any bugs actually. So you don't have to worry about any bugs. Google Wallet works as well. You can just get that from the Play Store. You'll have to download it from there. But uh, Android version 4.0.4. Uh, going on so um, there you have it there um, that would be letting you know you are running signage mod 9 out um, obviously <laughs> uh, so we got our home screen of course basically our stock launcher does have some added tweaks I'll get to that in a second up at the top you got your basically stock theme, stock theme um, with the blue icons up at the top swipe down notification bar as you can see you've got some added tweaks up here you got some notification power widgets which I believe was initially a touch with feature and that they ported it over to their ROM um, as you can see, you got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and sound. You can actually edit those. I will get to that in a bit. Of course, you have your settings shortcut as well, right next to the date. Um, the uh, pull-down bar is somewhat transparent. As you can see, you can somewhat see through it, just like stock. So, I mean, other than that, it looks very stock, other than these added tweaks up at the top. You get a stock pull-down bar, which I'm sure all you guys are used to by now. So, anyways... Let's go ahead and get into other some other things. As I said, I mean, you got your stack launcher, which is very smooth. Um, I believe it's called Trebuchet Launcher. It does have some other settings. Let's go back into our settings, and you'll see under interface, you have launcher settings right here. So go into those. Um, home screen settings, uh, you can set the number of home screens you have, which default screen grid size. Uh, padding, um, you can actually disable the search bar if you don't like to have that on your home screen. You can disable that persistent search bar if you don't like it. I don't mind it. So uh, you can have it resize any widget. There's transition effects. So if you want to have a bunch of transition effects, you can. Let's try tablet. Actually, let's not try tablet. Let's try rotate up. So if I switch it to rotate up, when I transition, it should rotate up. As you can see, it is kind of uh, moving up. I don't really have that much. Actually, let's drop a widget on my home screen so we can kind of see a little bit of a difference in the transition. So if I put a browser widget there, um, we can just kind of rotate it. As you can see, everything is rotating. So that's kind of cool. You got a bunch of different ones. In regards to widgets, they are scrollable. Some of them are resizable. There's, a, as I said, an edit in the, in the launcher where you can make all of them resizable. So you've got that option there, of course. You have your folders options. Just dra drag and drop apps on top of one another. So if I want to make a folder there, I can. I go into it. Um, as you can see, I can rename it as well to whatever I want it done. There you go. There's my folder um, going on there. So, uh, But back into settings, let's go hop back into those. Sorry about that. Let's go back into the launcher settings. Uh, so obviously you have a lot of home screen settings with those transition effects and such. I mean, you can choose whichever one you want, whichever one you like with page indicators and such. You have drawer settings, join with apps, the widgets. Um, you can have more transition effects changed in your drawer. Um, fade side pages and you have some other indicator settings as well. You also have general settings which would mean you can auto rotate your screen when you're on your home screen actually. On stock obviously you can't but you can actually have it auto rotate so as you can see it's rotating my home screen even though um, I am just on the home screen of course on stock you cannot do that. So that would be it for just about it for the launcher settings. Of course you can install Apex Launcher or Nova Launcher I believe from the Play Store and use those if you like those. Themes is just a placeholder, so there's no themes yet, unfortunately. System, um, system settings, you've got notification drawer, which would basically these power widgets up at the top. You can actually uncheck it, so if you don't want them, you can get rid of them. So, I mean, if you don't want them, you can obviously get rid of them. Um, hide on change, you can hide an indicator, hide the scroll ball, but here's where you can edit them. Go to widget buttons. You get a bunch of different ones to choose from. Go to sleep, you can change media, you can go airplane mode, brightness, lock screen toggle LTE, which I don't know if it works or not, obviously. I think it does, actually. I kinda wanna test it. So I'm gonna toggle LTE on there. So as you can see, it got added, added right away, LTE right over there. So that got added right away. I don't know if it's gonna switch from LTE CDMA back to only CDMA. So it'll be interesting to see if that works. 
um, toggle mobile data. You can also change the order. So just go to widget button order and obviously you can change this order which to whatever you want it to be, of course. So let's go ahead and try the toggle LTE out. It's, it's kind of something I wanted to point out anyway. So I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi and I'm going to press the LTE button. I don't know if it's going to switch my network settings to the proper ones, but I press the LTE button. So I go into settings, go into more, go into mobile networks and network mode and it looks like it did. So as you can see, LTE, CDMA, it is set to that by default. So if you, you might want to go check and make sure that you only select CDMA, of course, because the LTE networks aren't on yet. So right away after you first install the, the ROM, you might want to go into here and make sure that it's checked. So actually, let's go ahead and uncheck LTE now. So if I press the LTE button, I should uncheck it and let's see if it changed. So I go back into there, uh, network mode, and it did. So as you can see, it uh, it works. So you've got that LTE button, which is great, especially because um, for battery saving, you definitely want a widget going on for the LTE, of course, once it comes out. So if you're not in an LTE area, of course, you probably want to switch it off so it's not searching or anything. So um, nice to have that working. Of course, I, I was a little skeptical, didn't know if that was going to work, but it works great. Um, uh, as I said, speed is, is awesome. Going to the dialer, you have your stock ice cream sandwich uh, dialer. Everything is, is basically stock themed, of course. You've got your stock uh, stock browser. Mine's trying to connect to 3G still. It hasn't connected yet. Um, so obviously it's it, it's struggling, but it'll get there. Um, it, it sometimes will take a little while to connect to 3G. Um, I can hop back onto my Wi-Fi if need be, which I just turned back on. But uh, otherwise, lock screen wise, you um, obviously have your stock lock screen camera unlock, those two right there. Um, if I wanna go back to my browser, as I said, let's go into google.com, stock browser, stock ice cream sandwich browser, really no tweaks there. So um, you get your recent running apps button down here, which works great. You can swipe away what you don't want, as you can see there. So of course, as I said, I mean, not too much different from stock. Um, you got ROM manager app, you got terminal emulator. Other than that, you got pretty much all your stock applications as well. Let's go back into those settings though, because there are a couple more I wanted to show. Um, you got under system, you have uh, lock screen actually. So a lock screen is temporary. So hopefully you can expect that soon. Wallpaper settings, um, obviously you can choose a certain wallpaper and font size. So you can change your font size if you want huge um, or normal, <laughs> of course. So, I mean, you can change your font size there. Um, scroll down, actually go to the bottom and go to performance. Proceed with caution here. Make sure if you don't know what you're doing, you don't mess with any of these settings. But as you can see, you can change the CPU governor. You can change different clock speeds as well. So as you can see, interactive set by default. Uh, minimum CPU frequency, obviously down to 350. You can actually overclock by default to 1350, 1.35 gigahertz. As, as always, um, 1.2 gigahertz, 1200 megahertz is the stock clock speed, the dual core processor speed. So, I mean, you can underclock or overclock uh, by default just in the settings and make sure you check set on boot if you do want to overclock. I'm not too, I'm not one myself to overclock all that much as I prefer to have the battery life over the, the extra speed. So, um, but I mean, you got some memory management, 16 bit transparency, obviously don't mess with those if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but really other than that, you have a uh, profiles option. Um, which I believe C is CM9 specific, where you can set different settings for each profile. So if you wanna go home, you select that. If you're at work, you just select that profile. And those different settings will come up, sound settings, display settings, um, GPS data, and, and such. So there you have it there with uh, nice profile settings. But overall, that's really about it. I mean, everything is basically stock without those added tweaks, of course. So. Um, obviously, you can just remove widgets and such. Everything is basically the same. Of course, when you're in your lock screen, you can still pull down your notification bar and turn off your toggles and such. So you got those options as well. But other than that, that's really about it. That is my full review of the Signage of Mod 9 ROM on your uh, Sprint Galaxy Nexus. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment on the video below. Be sure to subscribe to me. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.